UMass Basketball Travis Ford Show. Sponsored by Coca-Cola. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the UMass Basketball Show presented by Coca-Cola. Scott Cohen, Travis Ford, and usually this is the time of the program where we dive right into a big week and a couple of wins, Coach, but you guys didn't play any ball games. Yeah, everybody I talked to says, you know, winter next game, and it was right after our last one, 11 days from now, and it's a very unusual break during this time of year, but very needed break for our basketball team. So really, uh, obviously, you, you were playing so well, 4-1, uh, which is what you guys are now, mm -hmm. before the break. I know you probably wanted to dive right back into uh, playing a game because you're hot, so so, well, you know, what, uh, what was this week like? Well, we did want to, it would have been great to get back on the court after the you know, Wisconsin Green Bay game because we played so well. Um, but it was our fifth game in about eight days, so we needed a break. We gave our guys off 11 days, or about three days. Uh, and then during the Thanksgiving break, we were allowed to practice twice a day. We had some individuals during the day and really got to just spend some time together as a basketball team, work on some things we need to improve on. We got to implement some new offenses, put in a few things mm -hmm. defensively. So it was, a, it was a great time to really kind of get back almost to like a training camp for our basketball team. Uh, we necessarily didn't start preparing for Syracuse uh, until yesterday. So we just really spent some time on our basketball team getting better. So um, let me ask you, what's the mood of the team? Um, you know, you're seeing some good things, things that uh, you're kind of looking forward to the year because of uh, the feel you're getting? Yeah, I do. I, I like the way the freshmen are coming along. I see them getting better every day, and it's on the defensive end. Guys like Max Grove, Matt Glass, Papa Lowe, Try I could go down the line, Gary Correa, who's been very consistent as a freshman. These guys I see the most improvement from. The other guys are kind of established themselves, and I think they're grasping our style of play more and more every day. Uh, because it is still new. It's still new. And we yep. still, it's a work in progress, uh, how fast we want to play, the 94 feet of defense, uh, and the mentality we want to play is more of a, a work in progress than the actual X and O's of it. So we've got to really work on that. I concentrated on as far as me talking to the basketball team about terminology, the mentality we want to play with. In the last three or four days has probably been the biggest thing we've focused on. All right. Well, the first segment of the show is usually looking back at the games, but since there were none, we decided it might be a good opportunity for the fans to maybe so you know meet some of the Minutemen. So we're going to start with uh, Dante Milligan. Uh, let's roll the tape, uh, take a look at him playing, and uh, let's uh, get us caught up on these guys right now. Coach. Well, Dante's a young man. He's a fifth-year senior. Uh, he's a guy who you know came on at the end of last year and someone who in the last couple of games has played extremely well. And one thing that Dante does is that his size six nine. He's very agile very mobile as you see running the court a great finish there something we want more from him uh, out of him is a physical presence from him you know at his size a lot of times he doesn't play aggressive enough and that's something we're trying to get better uh, get more out of him he's as you see there great uh, back to the basket low post score probably the best on our team right now as far as getting inside and for us a, a go-to guy uh, but he's really been putting up some you know uh, some impressive stats as far as points and, and rebounds but we just want more consistency, something he and I have talked about, better defense inside, and a more physical, aggressive presence inside for him. Now 55% from the floor, four and a half rebounds a game, nine points a game. He's a 6'9 forward senior from New York City. And uh, there's Dante Milligan. Luke Bonner's our next uh, guy coach. Again, best game for him was 11 versus St. Bonnie last year. He's a business major, and he's seven feet, one inches tall. Now, Luke is someone who is just getting better and better every day. Uh, he's also, he has a great outside shot and really fits the way we play as far as the, as many threes as we want to take. Uh, he's somebody who really understands the game of basketball. He makes everyone around him better. What do we want more from him? We need better low post defense from him. Again, physical presence inside. Uh, we need him scoring inside a little bit more, but we love him trailing the break, as you saw there, and knocking down threes. That Boy, he loves great. to shoot that outside and shot. And we want him shooting it. That's something that is his strength. That's something that we want to do as a basketball team. You see his energy. He's a great teammate, a great leader on the court. He's somebody who everybody enjoys being around every day. Luke's going to have a great – he's just going to get better and better. He, you know, uh, him and Dante and Tony Gaffney have and kind Chris of been, Lowe. And, and, and been trading that inside spot. And Chris Lowe, as you see here, who's been injured – really most of the season yep. this year. Uh, hasn't really gotten on track because of injuries. He's back to about 80% right now. Uh, but he's our quarterback of our basketball team. You'll see our team really go to another level uh, on how fast we play when he's going 100%. But he's, he's a veteran player. Has played the most minutes of anybody on our basketball team under me. Um, and uh, just someone who I've been very proud of as far as his improvement from his freshman year to where he's at right well, now. Well, he's just a junior coach, and of course he hit the game-winning shot versus Alabama in the NIT, so he's, uh, he's certainly well-schooled. And we'll move right along to uh, Tony Gaffney, a guy who we haven't seen a lot of. No, Tony is kind of our, uh, you know, uh, 
guy who we go to for energy. Uh, he can do a little bit of everything. Uh, I love it when Tony Gaffney's on the court. Uh, he can guard anybody from a point guard to a five man. Uh, he's the best in our press. Uh, he hmm. can, we need him to rebound the ball better. Uh, we need him to finish inside like he is there. We need him to finish inside better. Um, but he may have had the best practice this week of anybody as far as overall week is the way he was shooting the basketball and playing. But he's a guy who you'll see on the court a lot because he can do so many different things. All right, sociology major and, of course, transferred from BU. Uh, Ricky Harris, who I know, Coach, you're a big fan of. Yeah, Ricky's instant offense. Yep. And, I, you know, I love guys who can put the ball in the hole because that's the name of the game. Uh, he can score in a variety of ways, whether it be from the three-point line, whether it be driving, pull-up jump shot, getting to the rim. He's probably our best guy as far as driving off the dribble. Uh, he's an exciting player. He's an exciting player. He's a gutsy player. He's probably our gutsiest player uh, on our team as far as competitiveness. He really, and sometimes it gets the best of him at times because yeah. he is so competitive. But I'd rather somebody be like that and try to pull him back than try to teach them to be competitive. He can be a great defender when he doesn't get a little bit of a lazy streak at times. He gets so focused on offense, sometimes he relaxes on defense, but he has the potential, as you see there, right, a big right play, a very big play in that game, in the Yale game. He has the potential to be an absolutely incredible defender. He just has to buy into that at times. All right, and uh, last but not least, we saved uh, the big guy for last, Coach Gary Forbes. Well, Gary's been, uh, has had a good season thus far. He's somebody who, uh, uh, you know, is rebounding the ball extremely well from his position, leading us in rebounding. He can score in a variety of ways. He, he's probably our, one of our best low post scorers yep. at, at a three spot. He can really knock down the outside shot. Uh, again, things Gary's just got to work on being consistent. You know, to me, the definition of being a great player uh, is great players or that every day, every not day. just some day. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not about making shots all the time. It's about the effort you bring to the game every day. And he's, he's really working on that every day. And hopefully if he can really ch challenge himself to being great every day, then he could be one of the best players in our league. Well, he leads the team in scoring at 23. And, you know, this is his senior season. So, I mean, if he's going to do that, he's got to do it now. Now's the time. As we tell him, time is passing him by. Because he has the ability. There's no question. Gary Forbes is a very talented basketball player. But again, his challenges are, or do you want to be great every day, or is it something you're, it's like a light switch off and on with him a lot of times. Uh, but physical ability, there's not too many people that possess what he has. He's just got to decide how bad does he want it and bring it every single day. Well, we didn't show Etienne Brower because he's the subject of our Minute with the Minute Man feature. We're going to get to him in our next segment. But some of the guys maybe we didn't uh, show their coach who are going to be big contributors because right now I know you're, you're trying a lot of things. We are trying a lot of things, and we need to play 10, 11 guys a game. Yeah, you know, we didn't talk about any of the freshmen, which their, their time's going to come. Right. Uh, you know, Max Grove, Matt Glass, Gary Correa, Papa Lowe, Trey Lane, Matt Hill. I can go down the line, and the young man, Sadell Jones, who people haven't seen, is really right, playing sure, well right now. For Pittsfield, who can really score. So this freshman class is the future of UMass basketball. They're great. I love working with these guys every day. And that's something we talked about last week that I just want to reiterate is I'm having the most fun coaching this basketball team than any year I've probably coached uh, just because they're a great group of guys. I love the style of basketball we're playing. These guys are extremely coachable. They're very eager. we got a good mix of older guys, young guys. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun thus far. And this is, we, we talked last week too, this is more your style. This is the way you uh, want to coach. This is your mark, right? Absolutely. This is the style of basketball that I enjoy coaching that I think uh, is the most successful. Uh, you know, it's something that I played as a basketball player. We've probably taken it to a, a little bit another level as far as how fast we want to play. Mm -hmm. I've never played quite this fast. But it fits this basketball team. This team has speed. This team has scores. This team has shooters. Uh, this team has great passers. And that's what this offense is based around. People who come watch it, watch how fast we play. But it's based around passing. It's based around spacing and creating shots for each other while we're playing very up-tempo. Because if you look at the end of the game and we only have 10, 11 assists, we're probably not going to win many games. But if we're up there around 20, the ball, 22, sure. 23, we're going to win a lot of games. And that's basically what we're averaging. So. You know, it's, that's what it's based around, spacing and sharing the basketball. I don't think I've ever asked you this question in uh, the time we've done the show. So right now on this team, who who's you? Who is me? Who's oh, you? Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> the closest guy, I don't know. Uh, they're all probably a little bit better than me because uh, I, <laughs> I didn't guard a lot of people, but I could shoot it. Uh, right. But they can all shoot it. So, uh, you know, my forte, I guess, was shooting you the basketball. You want to keep the jury out on that one? I want to keep the jury out. We're still waiting to see. None of them can compete with me from the foul line. Right. That proven, that, that's what you're waiting for. That was proven for. the other day in practice. We were right. trying to in practice the other day by uh, free throw shooting, and every player had to make two free throws. 
practice kept going on right, and on and yeah. on. So finally I had to get up there and shoot for everybody and we <laughs> finished it. All right, very good. I know you love those free throws. And he, he was a good free throw shooter in college and you gotta I see do that. rub off on some of the I guys. hope so. All right. Well when Coach and I come back, we're gonna get to some of our regular features. Uh, we have um, Etienne Brower who's our minute with the minute man and we're gonna dip into the football file for the play of the week this week. So stick around as the UMass basketball show brought to you by Coca-Cola rolls on. And welcome back to the UMass Basketball Show brought to you by Coca-Cola. Time for the Big Y World Class Markets Play of the Week. And I know you were at the football game oh, on Saturday. Yeah, it was very exciting. Very exciting. You know, high-scoring football game. Yeah. I'm sure maybe the coaches probably didn't like it as much. But uh, for me, I love high-scoring football games. And it was great that we won. And uh, Coach Brown and his staff do an absolutely unbelievable job, especially this time of year. <clears throat> uh, and this football team is an exciting team to watch. And they're heading uh, to round two of the NCAAs. To Southern Illinois. Want to yeah. wish them the best of luck. Uh, obviously, uh, it's the alma mater of one of my assistant coaches, Steve Middleton, who had a great basketball career there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know a little bit about SIU. Yeah. Uh, but uh, really pulling for these guys. Uh, again, they uh, had some great experience on the road last year, some great success. So hopefully that will continue in the playoffs here. All right. Well, we obviously did not have a game to report as far as UMass goes. So let's take a look at our play of the week. It comes to us from the uh, UMass football game. And uh, Rashid Rancher with a nice big catch here in the end zone coach and boy this is about as good as it gets it it made the uh, top 10 uh, ESPN plays of the plays of the day well it's it's an uh, I was actually sitting in the press box uh, up with Jason Yellen and everybody and actually as I learned my lesson earlier in the year you're not supposed to scream for your uh, for your team and I actually screamed again for our team when they hit it was such an incredible play an incredible pass I mean, the pass was absolutely where it had to be, and then the catch was absolutely ridiculous as well. So just absolutely perfect play. Big and players make big plays. Big players make big plays, and those two, Cohen and Rancher, are just two of the best. All right, very good. Well, listen, good, uh, good luck to um, Coach Brown and uh, all of the team uh, this week when they head to uh, round two of the NCAA. And you can watch the Don Brown Show uh, here on ABC 40 tomorrow night at 11.15, so make sure you check that out too. So now, uh, Etienne Brower, we didn't look at him in the first segment of our show. He's another transfer from BU, and he's a uh, major contributor. Yeah, Etienne has probably been our most consistent player uh, on our basketball team thus far. You know what you're going to get from Etienne in every game. He's somebody who's going to play good defense. He's going to rebound. He's going to score. He's going to do a little bit of everything. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's really shooting the ball from what we consider a four spot. Uh, you know, and that's a very dangerous weapon when you have a four man, a, yep. a post player that can step out and shoot it, put it on the floor, can post, can do a lot of different things. You know, he's been waiting to do this. Last year he was injured I was most say, of the it's year. It's a big year, big year for him, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've always been very high on Etienne. Yep. You know, very. I've always been a big fan of Etienne Brower just because I like the things he can do. I, I've said it a lot of times. I, I'd love to have five Etienne Browers on your team because he can play the point. Yep. Uh, he can do a little bit of everything, two, three, four, or five. Um, but his injuries have always held him back a little bit, you know, last year. And now he's getting a chance to prove himself. And uh, he's just, just an extremely valuable weapon on our basketball team. The more he's on the court, the better off we are. All right. Well, he's the subject of our Minute with the Minuteman. And uh, ABC 40's Neil Jafoon takes a closer look at Etienne Brower. Etienne Brower, number 22 from West Hampton, New York. 6'7", guard forward. You mess. The end. For Etienne Brower, the road to success has been anything but easy. A standout high school player on Long Island, Brower originally deciding on Boston University as his collegiate home. A decision he soon regrets. With BU, it's like he gave me an ultimatum. It was either do this or leave. And I guess he didn't expect me to, but I said, I'm, I'm leaving. Like a man took it to himself and, and went to every one of myself and my teammates and told us that, you know, it wasn't for him anymore. The summer of 2005 filled with uncertainty for Etienne. He knew he wanted to play, but where? I had looked to go to Monmouth University, which was where I was almost going to go instead of BU. And, um, you know, UMass started coming into play, and then there was talk about me maybe getting a scholarship, and eventually just things all came into place, and I got a scholarship my first year. I mean, here I am. I got lucky, I guess. Brower and redshirt junior forward Tony Gaffney, both Terrier transfers, will tell you there's one main difference between Amherst and Com Ave. The smile. The happiness. We don't take anything for granted anymore. Um, you know, we wake up with smiles on our faces. My mom always told me that she would always hear me singing and stuff in the house in high school. And I said, that's how she would tell me if I was happy or if I was in a good mood or not. And then she said, when I was at BU, she was, I never hear you sing anymore. And she said, the first day, the first time when I came to visit you at UMass, I guess the guys had a game or something. I was just getting ready, I was getting dressed. And she said, I heard you sing in the shower for like the first time in, in like two years or something. So she could tell I was happy. Still, UMass not without its hardships. Etienne hampered by an ankle injury much of last season, retools his game and mindset. 
Like I try to come to practice early and then sometimes shoot late if the girls don't practice, whatever. I just try to shoot as much as I can, so I'm confident, some confidence on my jump shot is just added that way, or ball handling, whatever it is, lifting, getting my body strong. Obviously, he was more disappointed with his season last year than anyone. I think of all players, it's his, the, his improvement from last year to this year is greater than anybody's. Payoff for the extra hours, a red hot start, averaging about 15 points per game and already amassing more points in five games than he did all of last season, including a game high of 25 against Wisconsin Green Bay, including seven of 10 from three point land. I'm just, you know, trying to be a leader for my teammates and I know we have so many young guys that I, I got to be one of the veterans. I mean, we only have a few seniors and juniors on our team. So, you know, I know it's my last year, so I got to give it all I got this year. When it comes to UMass's captain, there's more than meets the eye. Etienne speaks French fluently, and he is known to be one of Coach Ford's more responsible players. Without a doubt, that's the father. Penny needs someone to feed him, um, read him bedtime stories and stuff like that. Penny cannot live on his own. At specialty? Chicken palm and pasta. And he stole that from me, though. The only thing I really cook is chicken parm. I make a very good chicken parm. He started cooking out of necessity. Eating out can be expensive in Amherst. His love of food, though, comes from his French heritage. They always say that the difference between Americans and the French is Americans eat to live and the French live to eat. I'm, you know, very open to eating any type of food. And rabbit is real good. When he's not in the gym or kitchen, Etienne can be found student teaching first grade at Pelham Elementary. They're adorable. I'm going to miss those kids a lot. They're, I mean, it's just... The little kids are so rejuvenating. With the little kids, it's just like they, they always keep you on your toes and they're so clever. They're real smart. And even though they're, they're real small, they, they're smarter than you think. There's a little girl in the class. Uh, she, sometimes she, she, gets, um, she gets upset because she, you know, she misses her mom or something. So I go, okay, I'll pick you up. And I pick her up and I let her touch the ceiling and then she stops crying right away. And now all the kids want me to do that every day when I see them. Etienne Brower, UMass's jack of all trades on and off the court. Neil Jafoon with this week's Minute with the Minuteman. Ah, that community service is uh, so important. Good for him. No, you know, Etienne is, the greatest thing I can say about him is I've never seen him in a bad mood, ever. I've been around him for three years now. He's always in a great mood. Uh, you know, we have, you, you can come across people who are moody, especially we have players who come oh, in. Some no days doubt. they're up, some days they're down. Etienne's never, he's low maintenance. We have other players who are high maintenance that some days you just don't know what mood they're going to be in. Etienne's always in a great mood, and I think that has a lot to do with how much success he's having now, and he's going to be having a long career in basketball, a long career in basketball, because he loves it, he works hard at it, but he's just fun to be around every day because you just never see him in bad mood, and he is one of the most responsible players we have. If you tell him to do something, he does it. It's not, you don't have to come back two or three days later and, you know, wonder if he did it or not. He's somebody who we can always count on. I was going to say, you, you count, count on a guy And like his that. teammates know that. Yep. He's somebody you can count on. He's just, he's so much fun to coach because he's always in a great mood. And I've gotten on him as hard as anybody at times and want more from him at times. And he just responds. He doesn't, you know, have an attitude. He's just very, very positive. He just has a great, great outlook on everything that he does. And it's just fun to be around him all the time. Okay, good luck. And good luck to you teaching that class. That's really good stuff. Absolutely. Well, when the UMass basketball show continues, Continues. We're going to hit the practice floor again with Coach Ford. Again, a little different this year. We're actually going to go in and uh, get a bird's eye view. So stick around as the UMass Basketball Show. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the UMass Basketball Show brought to you by Coca-Cola. Uh, Coach's Corner is up. and. <laughs> Boy, you must be getting sick of practice, Coach. You're finally going to get, get a couple of games this week, but, boy, you've been hitting the practice court hard. We've needed it, but we are anxious to play our next game. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you can only spend so much time on the practice court where you want to take what you've worked on and put it in place. Uh, but we did get a lot done this past week, and we're just anxious to get back on the court. Guys still, uh, you know, uh, they get tired of it. But I guess the yeah. Thanksgiving holiday probably broke it up a little bit. It broke it up a little bit, and you didn't have school to worry about, things like that. You know, that, that eases their mind a little bit so they can just concentrate on basketball during that period. But uh, there's no question this time of year you'd rather be playing games and practicing but this team being young changing the system the way we have we needed to practice time. all right well listen take us inside coach uh, what do we got here this right here we're working on a drill that we do it's called working on our uh, closeouts you see here guys chopping their feet taking away the drive uh, it's called closing out not giving up the middle of the court you see guys touching hands here it's just a warm-up drill uh, preparing us for our defensive breakdown uh, you know, our defense is based around we want to uh, not give up high percentage shots. You know, taking away the drive, challenging every outside shot. Uh, again, closeouts are something almost every team works on. You see here working on our uh, hand movements. One uh, chart that we 
uh, keep track of every game is deflections, how many times our hands get a piece of the ball. So we always want to have active hands. Now we're moving on to another drill. We're actually working on defensive rotations where we have weak side defense. We're trapping the baseline, which we call trap the box. Close out again. Guys stepping up and working on actual defensive rotation. So this is kind of a build-up drill where we start with just closeouts, then we move here. You see trapping the baseline uh, and working on defensive rotations out of what we call our five defense, which is our man-to-man -man defense. A lot of hard work going on out there. A lot of hard work. These guys, uh, you know, one thing we usually do not have trouble with these guys is their work ethic. They have great work ethic. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you have that, you can build with that. And it's been a joy to work with these guys every day. All right, and we're doing a little bit different this year. Uh, it's not just the old coach, uh, you know, with, uh, with the microphone pointing things out. We're going to take you right inside and let you look. Right inside of practice was something that uh, I'm excited about, so you can actually see how we prepare for teams, how we work on our defenses, how we build, you know, do different drills. And, <laughs> now, is this because they weren't good, or is this what you do anyway? No, this is when things aren't going too well. We <laughs> need to get them focused in, and that's right. one way to get them focused really quick. Uh, but... Uh, you know, we do a lot of defensive drills, right? You know, uh, we, we have probably 10 different defenses that we work on each day. Uh, again, a, a build-up drill of our five defense. Guys working on a good move there by Gary Forbes. And again, passing the basketball is what we work on a lot as well. All right, very good, Coach. And that is our Coach's Corner. And uh, there you go, brought to you. By, uh, by UMass, by UMass and Coca-Cola. All right, so um, transferring that energy from practice to the game, that's a tough thing sometimes, isn't it? It is a tough thing, and that's what we've concentrated on more than anything the past three or four days. Is the men it's a mentality more than anything. Is we're trying to teach our players we want this to be every game to be a 94-foot game, offensively as well as defensively. And a lot of times, uh, defensively, our offense has been okay as far as keeping up the pace we want. Uh, we still want to get a little bit faster than we've been, but the pace has kind of stayed the way we wanted. But as the game goes along, we've seen our defense kind of relax a little bit, and we're trying to you know, get our guys conditioned uh, to always for 40 minutes when the last 10 minutes of the game, when teams haven't practiced the way we practice, that's when they're going to give in and no we're doubt. just getting stronger. So that's, that's a big mentality thing for our basketball team. We're still working on that every day. All right. Ask Coach Ford brought to you by UMass Catering this week. And uh, I think this may be a bit of an obvious question. Dave from Florida Mass checks in with them. What are your realistic goals for the upcoming season? And is a top 25 ranking uh, a realistic goal? I would imagine that's going to happen sooner or later, Coach. Absolutely. It, it is a realistic goal. It's something that, you know, I think this <clears throat> basketball team is a team that uh, is can and can surprise a lot of people. Uh, it's not something we go around talking about that we're a great basketball team because we're not right now. Or, you know, we haven't put a lot of expectations on this team. Uh, you know, we're still figuring out who we are yeah. and working on a new system. But, you know, I think the the promise of this team could be very good. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we're four and one right now. And, you know, I'm very happy with that. The one game that we lost, uh, we did not play very well at all and still yeah. was almost down, got it. down three with 14 seconds to go and could have tied the game. Uh, and we played very, very poorly, very poorly. So uh, I think the potential of this team is there, but it's still a work in progress. But a top 25 ranking, I think it's definitely realistic. Is it something we talk about? Absolutely not. We're just taking it one day at a time, one practice at a time. And uh, if we ever get ahead of ourselves with this basketball team, if they ever start thinking that they're a top 25 team, sure. we don't want them to think that. We want them to be, as we tell them, humble and hungry. Uh, is it something that they could achieve? Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, one uh, game that win that would go a long way to getting something <laughs> like that is uh, the subject of our next segment, the look ahead. UMass takes on the Orange of Syracuse this week, and we'll break down that game and uh, wrap up the big show when we come back. Stick around. And welcome back to the UMass Basketball Show brought to you by Coca-Cola. Time for the UMassAthletics.com look ahead. Let's get right to Syracuse coach. And, you know, hey, they come as advertised every year. Uh, extremely talented basketball team. They've, already, you know, they've been in the NIT, played in the Garden twice, so they're obviously uh, a team that's very seasoned right now. But talent-wise, extremely talented, extremely talented. From one, two, three, four, five spots on the court, uh, they can do a little bit of everything. They're going to run and gun with us. This should be a very exciting game. We're, we're not going to slow it down by any stretch of the imagination. We're, we're going to get it out there and run and see what happens. Happens. You know, the Carrier Dome uh, is an exciting place to play, uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, but it's a good test for our basketball team, absolutely, to see where we're at. And you see all five starters for their team average double figures. Tough stuff right there. UMass uh, last one on 12-30-95 in Hawaii, and UMass has never played in the Carrier Dome. Well, listen, uh, we're running short on time, so just got to say best of luck to you against the Orange Men. you got one more on Saturday, and we'll, uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Excited to get back on the court. We need to. All right, good, good thing. Two wins this week, and hopefully it'll go well, and we'll see you guys next week. Take it easy.